So West Ham lose 2-0 away to Watford and they slip into the relegation zone. All is not well there. Today I'm joined by Sam, we've got Deluded Gunnar and Rory from Chelsea Fan TV, CFC Fan TV. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're laughing, but I tell you ain't laughing. West Ham. Spurs had a bad weekend this weekend, but well, they are in tatters at the moment. I mean, it, was, it was David Moyes' first game in charge. It was never going to be easy going away to Watford. Marco Silva, the man in demand at the moment, maybe... Even West Brom will be putting in a phone call now after Tony Pulis got sacked. But they weren't at the races at all. I think you look at the Everton game. It was their first game under David Unsworth. Was that Chelsea? Yeah, so they'd in lost. The cup, in the cup. Well, they lost, but Pep was really positive. He's like, I can see immediately, I can see immediate differences. Mm. I can see positivity. Straight away, the fans are chanting against the boards, against Karen Brady and co. And they're saying the exact same sort of performance has just happened under David Moyes. It happened under Slavin Bilic, you know. Why have we got any reason to be positive? And they're now f they're four points above Crystal Palace. Mm. There are nine points in the relegation zone. <sighs> They've got a tough season now to avoid relegation. As far as I'm concerned, anyway, with Moyes in charge. But See, maybe what, did, what did you think of the appointment of Moyes? Um, if I'm honest, no disrespect to Moyes, but we will probably laugh. He's got a bit of a reputation now. It's a bit of a clownish thing. But who else could they really have? Who else could they really have? I love people do that. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he's yeah, a clown. He's a clown. Yeah. <laughs> who else could they have got? Like, it's, an it's an impossible job. He's someone that's clearly trying to rebuild his reputation. He's had a, a number of dud jobs. He's been at Sunderland and things like that. It was never going to change after one game. Sure, sure, if they won and put in a convincing performance, he'd be the messiah. But I'd give him the benefit of that. We need to see how he is um, in five games. It's not his squad. One thing that does concern me about him, though, is he kept in his press conference, he kept referring to running. If you don't run, you're not in the squad. I can understand that about effort and things, but that just leads me to believe, are you going to play Hernandez? Are you, you going to play him or not? Because he's not necessarily a mad runner. But on, on the basis of quality, of course he's going to play. But yeah. Well, West Ham were kind of... They were rock bottom in terms of kilometres covered yeah, exactly. in the Premier League. That's so they're, a lack they're, of effort. they're clearly not working hard enough. Yeah. Billich and Moyes is known, if nothing else, as a bit to of a, ta run, yeah. a taskmaster. I mean, it's going to take a little bit more than just running. Yeah, uh, to mean, get them out. Got to do something in January, it's, it's but what he does, I don't know. Who's going to want to go? This is what I'm saying. Uh, from from the day that it was announced, I thought David Moyes getting everything right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 David Moyes getting that job, I just couldn't. I couldn't. I like, can't yeah. fathom that logic at all. There is no, it makes absolutely no sense to me. He's done nothing to deserve to that deserve opportunity. That, yeah. Like, it should be a meritocracy, shouldn't it? You should work hard. You you know you do well at one club, you get an opportunity at another club. He has been he's had a disastrous time since he left Everton, and somehow they've given him a job. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Him going away to Watford. I think Sam, you know, I do agree with you, Watford are playing very well. They came to Chelsea and they nearly taught us a lesson. And they beat they got us. very lucky, they've beaten <laughs> you. However, I think it's not it's not a terrible place to start your managerial campaign away at Watford. It's not it's not away at Old Trafford or, you know, away at the Emirates. Away at Watford is a winnable fixture. It's generally perceived as a winnable fixture. And they went there and Nothing's changed Nothing at all. Changed. And they're back to square one. Exactly. I, I actually think it's worse than going to Man United. Because if we're going to Man United, West Ham fans would have written that off. That's what I mean. No, that's exactly yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It's but not Sam, Sam Sam led that in and was being very generous to Moyes. He was like, you know, Watford, they're, they're a team that were on form, and that's absolutely true. But people look at Watford away as a as a winning fixture. Points, but yeah. they shouldn't this season. No, they absolutely shouldn't. No, they shouldn't. What for a, it's like going Burnley away and expecting three points. What for a really good team can't. this year? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> what for a good team? But we can't we can't start putting Vicarage Road of course, in the in same that same bracket as other as, places. Yeah. As Old that's Trafford. And, They're playing yeah. well, but exactly. you should be able to exactly. get three people, points. Like well, you have to work season, a lot harder. People yeah. will have got a, a lot of people will have got three points. Of course, of course. They're playing well, but you still I don't agree. Take I don't agree at all. all. Being informed doesn't be equal really not being able place. to take three points off a of team. Like they're playing well, that means you should have to work a bit harder, but you should still be beating these games. Not, I'm not talking exclusively to West Ham. I'm speaking as in a general basis. But and, yeah. and a new manager coming into a club can give it a lift. You go, you exactly. play in Watford. You think, right? Oh, you know, I imagine that West Ham fans, had the appointment been slightly different, would have been going into that fixture. New manager comes in, gives everybody a bit of buoyancy. Play in Watford, right? Let's get behind a team. We can make, we can definitely go there. It's a great away end. You can definitely make a racket. You can definitely get behind your team more Ooh, so than yeah. the home fans. Let's really turn this on, I and mean, it's a good opportunity. 
that didn't happen. Didn't do, you, happen. do you reckon the players are sitting in the in, <laughs> in the changing room, right? And they just look up, and David Moyes is boring. To a degree, of there. course, of just course, grey. Of course, you've got to see that. How can he inspire you? I don't understand. Exactly. That. How is he going to exactly. be the man to like get? That's you That's why he should play the kids, because at least some kid, not all kids, because they're in a tough position. But in times like this, like Arsenal last year, I wanted some kids to play, because there's a re there's a re they want to be out there. In times like this, you see other you see established players hiding and things like that. Kids, they want to go and show what they want to do. They want to show they can be a star. They can galvanise the side. Who knows? They could even get you three points. So he might have to look at West Ham's academy. I don't know who is in that academy, but they might have to look to that. I, th I think so. During the during the game, we saw lots of chants from the fans about um, sack the boards, and it, obviously Bilic was the man who got the sack first. But one game into Moyes, and you can see that the patterns haven't changed. There's still there's an underlying problem at the club. Is that who who do you think is the sort of to blame for what's going on at West Ham? The board. Definitely the board. It's just like at Arsenal. Golden Sullivan. Board. Golden it's Sullivan. Board. But, but, how, but how, how does that? How can anything then change between now and the end of the season for West Ham fans? Well, they, can they just expect it's not likely to change? It's not likely to change. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're likely to go down. I don't think they'll go down. I'm going to stick my neck. I think West Ham. Uh, something tells me they won't go down. Like, the, the only reason they might not is because there are a lot of bad teams in the league. This yeah, that's what I was looking. I was looking at the, the league table. There are teams that are mid-table, averaging a point a game. Exactly. You know, and if you're a little bit more than a point a game, you know, if you're sort of 14 points after 12 games, you're looking at potentially qualifying for Europe. Of course. Like. Whereas any other season, averaging a point a game, you're done. Yeah, so there exactly. is a, it's a bad, it's a bad bottom it's half of the league this year, one, yeah. which means I think that West Ham have a chance because there are a lot of teams that could capitulate. <laughs> but the, the potential that they go down is huge, and. I mean, the, the other chant that I saw, Sam, I saw that one about sack the board, mm. but the one I thought was sort of more poignant was the one where they were going in, uh, you know, you destroyed our, you destroyed our club. They yeah. did. And they did. They did. But, but having fans chanting that at board, and in my opinion, rightly chanting that at board, is perhaps one of the most poisonous atmospheres, one of the most poisonous things you can say to, to, to the people that well, were you, in you theory remember leading what West Ham told they had that, la that last season correct me if I'm wrong at Upton Park they had a very good season yeah, finished seventh, yeah. yeah then what were they told when they go to the new stadium we want to push for Europe we want to do this do that, and that personally as an Arsenal fan I can sympathise with that because I can see the exact same things the lying the telling us one thing and then doing the other and then you look at West Ham and you look at who is on that board and you consider the fact that it's largely taxpayers paying for that stadium it's just an, inv an, an investment for the, for the board they don't really care for football but you look at where it's come from you've got, us, you've got um, an excellent Season, final season at Upton Park. Dimitri Payet on absolute fire. Yeah, Payet as well. So, okay. where they are now, where they've, Bilic is no longer in charge, they've got David Moyes, and more crucially, their home has been taken away from them. Mm. You know, a lot of West Ham fans probably wouldn't have wanted to wanted move over. To some, some were okay with it, you can't deny that. But what they've got now is this stadium that they don't like, a board that they absolutely hate, a squad that's the most under, uh, yeah. underwhelmed, yeah. underwhelmed yeah. but also under infused. You know, are unable to perform and deliver because there's just no confidence there's there no anymore. Yeah. And they've got David Moyes in charge. <laughs> and, I, and I think the stadium is the bigger thing. When you say it like that, <laughs> yeah, when you list yeah. it, yeah. it's appalling, isn't it? It is yeah, appalling. Exactly. Are, there any, are there any Moyes. positives? Is, is there no, any before way that, before, before, before the positives, that. I don't think there are any positives. No. I think they're going down. And more, more than that, I think, I think that they, um, I think that the stadium thing could actually damage their football club, like. The best thing could do is if someone buys Where is their home? Like Where's their soul? Where, where, where is the West Ham that the, like we had the fans from, West Ham fans? He hates the new stadium. They've got that now for the rest of their lives. But they can't go back to Upton Park. But, it's gone. But, but do you not think that they needed that stadium move to try and elevate themselves from to the a, a stadium no, that's trying to push the top you know, six? I, to can, I can ask you a question to ask, answer that question. And I think that this is a really interesting one, right? Apart from Swansea, Name a club who have moved that have improved Matthew. So Swansea left the Vetch, went to the Liberty, and are now an established Premier League team. Apart from them, <sighs> name a club that have left their stadium. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure people Brighton. watching this will be able to. Probably, probably Brighton. But you know, I mean, Arsenal or or, mm. or somebody. You know, Man City. They're not an example of that because it was done in a different way. Mm. City didn't. City's brilliance today isn't a result of their moving, moving stadium, yeah, it's yeah. a result of a lot of other things. A name of Swansea, I think, are a good example. Swansea, fair enough, they've moved, they've made it happen. Sure. But there isn't, 
there's not really. There's, there case. isn't an obvious example, not to me. Anyway, I'm sure people watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, but there, but there is like take Old Trafford for example. We had the ability to expand on our because there was space around the stadium up to part. There's there's nothing have, there. They couldn't, yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah, have yeah, made yeah, it yeah, any yeah, bigger. I think so they've reached their peak as far as the stadium is concerned. Do you know that for a fact? That did they exalt? Because at Chelsea originally we were told. Well, it's the exact same thing as Spurs, isn't it? You couldn't expand anywhere. But they've made some. They've managed to do it. And at Chelsea, we were originally told. You cannot, you cannot make this ground any bigger. Yeah. So, so suddenly we're moving to Wilston. Everybody's up in arms, fu- furious. You know, we were, we had the things. Uh, we owned a pitch. It was like Chelsea pitch yeah. owner CPO. We was like, say no. It went to a vote. Chelsea fans, people like me versus Abramovich, mm. and we managed to win. All of a sudden, oh, it turns out we've got this new architect involved, and you can develop your ground. You look at, you look at, you look at yeah. Gold, Sullivan, and Brady, and you. It doesn't strike me, although I don't as know. As in people. But like. I, well, there's not that, but there's, there's also, I, they don't strike me as someone with, that would go to the ends of the earth to stay at Upton Park. Exactly. The actual, the, 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 the clusterfuck of making that happen, it would have been impossible in the business decision. It's just say, executive CJ. decisions. They, these guys don't have emotion behind it. Exactly. And Sam, I don't know enough about yeah. it, but I would guess, I don't know for this for a fact, but I would guess that they wanted that Olympic Stadium, which meant that all of their focus was on achieving that, fighting Tottenham for the privilege of playing there, winning that fight and celebrating the fact that they've won it. I doubt that they exhausted every possible uh, possibility Avenue. of making Upton Park a, a 21st century ground. I doubt, I'm, this is conjecture. Yeah, this is just assumptions, but uh, with, uh, with good reason right. as well, because you think what Tottenham have had to do in order to build, just to build on our, on our current stadium, mm. it's taken something like 12 years. Um, it's there's cost been a fortune. An absolute yeah. fortune. It's going to cost so many close high to court battles. Playing at Wembley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, gonna, yeah. it's also going to cost a billion pounds. It's dragged out, basically. It's like builders 800 million, you know that's going to run over. Um, we've had to buy every property around, which in the middle of London is not it's a not, really difficult thing to do. It's very expensive. Mm. Also, as a part of this, we've had to rebuild White Hart Lane Station completely. It's going to be completely rebuilt, a new station that Spurs are paying for. And we've had to buy all of the properties as a runway to give a clear run mm. from the station to, to, the, to, the, to the stadium. That's mad. It's like like a real life when, game when, when monopoly. When <laughs> the, the alternative, though, the alternative, if you're Daniel Levy, is why don't we just go to Hertfordshire? You know, somewhere like near Chessant or somewhere like that, where there's a derelict land, you can just build a stadium to your own specifications without any grief. Mm. Let's just go and do that. It, it, like from a financial point of view, it makes complete sense. Obviously, the heart and lifeblood of Tottenham. It, it, and I completely agree with this. Tottenham belong in Tottenham. Mm. Build a stadium at White Hart Lane. Absolutely, mm. I'm glad. It, I'm glad it works out like that. But if you're a businessman, and that's what. Gold, Sullivan, Brady, and these are people are essentially. They just say, let's yeah. just go. Forget what. I'll, I'll, forget I'll be really interested to know if there's any West Ham fans watching this, if they actually know a little bit more of an insight into what West Ham did try to do That's to nice. try and stay at Upton Park mm. and and take it forward. But uh, as a club, you know, what do you think West Ham fans can expect between now and the end of the season? Is it <sighs> is is that ball going anywhere? Because no. the ball is not going to get. They're sacked. desperate to go. They're desperate to, they're not going to get sacked, but they're desperate to leave. They're desperate yeah. to sell up. Well, there's no such thing as sacking a board there. Yeah, that's that's yeah, the point. Yeah. No, but they're, de- they're, they're absolutely desperate to sell. If, if, some, if somebody came in with a bid of, th- what, what are we talking, I think something like 300 million, they would sell. So we're saying, is this best case scenario now for West Ham fans is just someone comes <laughs> in and buys the club? Well, it depends who buys. I fully agree with that. This fully. is what I'm worried about. Like, I, I, I'm not worried about it. If I was a West Ham fan, I'd be worried about Because I think even the new owner, I mean, it doesn't replace what they had two years ago at Upton Park. You know, so much... No, but it could replace no, what, but what they people have, want what to see is now. drive yeah. and forwardness and I something suppose, to believe in. I, I guess if results on the pitch, you know, it kind of they, that negates all and negative... Who buys it now? Who buys it now? That's it. I mean, it's Probably a rich football yeah. club. Someone will buy someone, it. Yeah. Um, but not for a price. If you were to... If, say, say for Depends example, how they you decided it. to... The London club. You would want... I mean, they're getting... As the owners of the club and very business-minded business astute people they're going to want as much money as possible. possible. As a potential buyer, you're going to look at it, discuss everything that we've discussed, and, say, and go, it's, not it's worth yeah. half of that, yeah. which basically means stalemate, doesn't it? Nobody I think um, there's oh. rumours that, that West Ham board will be given that London stadium because the cost of running it to... Oh, really? Well, the, the idea... What, as a gift? Uh, yeah, because the... I co- changed everything. They're <laughs> the most privileged club. Suddenly, That's they've been I given think. a football ground. Did think of the grief we've just been speaking about. If they're given a football stadium... Oh, I didn't know about that. That's, that well, changes no, everything. I, Suddenly, I, they're the, one of the most desirable clubs to buy. Someone big buys them. Well, the, the problem with transferring it into an athletic stadium to, is it costs an absolutely fortune, astron- yeah. yeah fortune. 
Um, and the club are not paying for it. It's the uh, Olympics committee. Or, or yeah, but, but, but you've, you've seen with Sheikh Mansour at Man City, all it takes is one man with a bit of a vision and uh, basically a bottomless bank account who can turn a club... That's essentially a state. Yeah, that's that's essentially a state. Between, but they mate. clearly exist. And it just takes that one person... As you said, it's a London but club. It's, if it's going to have a stadium, it's got a hell of a lot going for it. But and West Ham is a very established club. All these people, all these people have bottomless pits of money. Stan Kroenke has a bottomless pit, pit of money. money. He just doesn't want to spend yeah, it. Yeah, he just doesn't give a crap. Yeah. It's, it's about the right man, not just the rich man. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. West Ham, you know, to go from the good feeling all round, that, uh, that West Ham fans had <laughs> leaving Upton Park after that season with Dimitri Payet, with Bilic, they're thinking, oh, you know what, this is our time. It's a bit like Everton fans this season thinking, look, yeah. we finally spent the money. This is our time to break into that top six. Mm. And the reality could not be further from further the truth. From the truth yeah. But between now and the end of the season, I, I don't know. I, you're, you're right in the, the bottom half of the league. There are so many bad teams down there that West saved. Ham might they be able be to saved, scrape yeah. above a couple of them and I avoid think, relegation. I don't think you're going to need the, you know, like the foot. What, what would you say? Forty points survival. Well, it's yeah. typically what For, forty-two. Gary, I know West Ham actually. West Ham went down with forty-two, but forty-two, you should be absolutely safe. I think that there's so many poor teams now, all taking points from one another, that you could need more than that. West Ham have only got nine points since the twentieth of November. They're in trouble. <sighs> they're in you trouble. can't hide the fact that they are in trouble. And David Moyes is a man who, well, his most recent endeavour in the Premier League took Sunderland down. <laughs> So let us know in the comments below what you mm. think of the West Ham situation. Will they get relegated? Is David Moyes the right man for the job? And how are they going to get the board out of that football club? Remember, also, we've just talked about the North London derby, <laughs> uh, which was tough for me. <laughs> uh, and I won't be reading the comments in this either. So don't, you know, so don't well, if you, you think you're crafty, don't, you don't, you don't get, get me here, here. <laughs> or there. You're not going to get me. All right. Uh, yeah. And remember, we're doing Arsenal Club tomorrow. That's Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you then.